Hi everyone from me, Brent Graham of goodforthegame.co.za. Welcome to this Thursday night edition of the Handicap Rugby Chat That Matters. We've got plenty of games to get through tonight. We've got four super rugby fixtures, and then we've got the eight URC fixtures to talk about. Now, if you're looking at the screen, you're thinking, where's the third guest? Well, I can tell you, Oracle, he's thrown in the towel. He was on the Bulls over Northampton last week, and he's decided to take a little bit of a break. And I've always admired that about the Oracle. When things start going wrong, he doesn't keep trying to punt his way out of trouble. He actually takes a step back regathers his forces and comes out firing. So we don't have the Oracle with us tonight, but we do have the Moss Man. And Nathan, welcome, mate. How are things there in New Zealand? Uh, good, yeah. Um, early. <laughs> it's uh, 7 a.m. here. So, yeah. So Nathan, can you hear me? Still to sleep out of the eyes. I, th I think my Wi-Fi just... Okay. Yeah, sorry, man. I, I think my Wi-Fi is a little bit messed, so you might be hearing me a bit late. Nathan, can yeah, can yeah, I can hear. I just want to see if you're still there. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, cool. Listen, um, I think it's my Wi-Fi giving a bit of trouble. I see lots of guys in the live chat already. What I'm going to do? Let's get started on the games. You chat. I might change connections at some point if I feel it is a problem, but normally this gets better as the show goes. Just to welcome guys in the live chat: Henrik, Mark, Farid is there, Peter Paul. Peter Paul again, JJ Bauer, and let's just have a look what Farid has to say quickly. Yeah, he said, hope you guys are well. Bumper weekend for rugby. Japan, US Super Rugby, URC, MLR, MLR Women Six Nations. Let's go. And Nathan nodding his head there. So, Nathan, let's get into the action. I'm going to start off with Super Rugby. Friday morning, South African time, Friday night, I guess, New Zealand time. Uh, we've got the Drua up against the Hurricanes. Hurricanes unbeaten. And we've got the Drua here at plus 10.5. And this handicap has been... Fairly stable all week, but the points line, and I know you pointed this out on the good for the... I, I, I thought it was you, know, you you were on the, the Blues game on the good for the game forum, but I think the, yeah. the points line has come in a bit here from, I think, an opening call of about 61.5. Yeah. the it's it, It's been relatively stable, but it has bounced around a bit so between sort of 10.5 and, and 9.5. And, and I've seen it probably oscillate between those two numbers maybe three or four times, um, you know, over the last couple of days. So there there is a bit of indecision there. And, and you can see where it comes from because the the obviously the hurricanes are flying, um, but then on the flip side, you know you've got the the juror and their record at home, and then in the mix you've got the fact that the hurricanes are also resting a lot. So so the my, my take on it is that uh, the Drua, obviously the, the they've had good teams come there before um, and be slightly under strength and and lose. So um, you know we. We saw the Hurricanes actually lost there last year. Um, Crusaders have obviously been there twice and lost. Um, you know, maybe not this year's Crusaders team, but definitely last year's. Um, you know, that was the eventual champions. So, so you, you know, you can't say that they um, they weren't a good team at that point in time. So, my my, my gut feel is that for the Drua, you know, that all they need to do is is kind of get within within ten. Like I feel that they can do that. Like I'm not sure that this is a game necessarily where the Canes are going to try to turn up there and, and go all out um you know I, I sort of it could go either way i mean the, uh, last year we saw as i said saw the canes go there and lose saw the, the crusaders go there and lose but the blues went there and, and won easily so uh you know it's it's really up and down the thing that other thing that gives me pause on this a little bit is the fact that it's it's in super and it's a night game um so the you know that that usual situation and there were there were headlines during the week about crusaders players having you know nearly having to go to hospital um, because of dehydration and these sorts of things. So um, that's not going to be a factor, uh, which I think also plays into the Canes. So uh, there's a, kind of a, a, there's a lot of, of pluses and minuses, I guess, and pros and cons on both sides, um, which gives me pause. I, I have actually bet this um, myself. I did take the draw when it was uh, plus 11 and a half, but I don't have it. It wasn't a big bet, and I don't have a huge amount of confidence in it. Yeah, I'm just having a look. I capped this game 11 and a half exactly. So also not a lot of confidence there. Might have a, a nibble of under points. I'm actually going away tomorrow. I will be down on my way down to, to Durban for a bit of a, a break. So, yeah, I may not get uh, much further involved in this one. Uh, let's have a look then at the next game. And that is uh, the second game of uh, Friday morning, South Africa time. We've got the Reds here. Minus five and a half against the Highlanders and a points line of 57.5. This one, I think, opened minus seven and a half red. So a little bit of money for the for the Highlanders. 
Uh, it's actually opened a little bit higher than that. So it opened, um, th there was nine, mainly nine and a half, but I think you could probably could have got 10 and a half in places okay. as well. So um, it, it's come in a long way and, and quite rightly, I think. I think this is one uh, when the lows came out that a lot of people would have circled and said, this looks a bit off. Uh, given that at the time, uh, the Reds, they're missing Tate McDermott, um, missing uh, um, McRae, and I think Siru Eru, I think, is another player that's out. So um, it does look a bit more of a makeshift team. And uh, <laughs> the, the Reds have been so up and down. Uh, the, the Highlanders are not a terrible, they're not a good team, but they're not a terrible team. And if, you know, if you're saying that, you know, all they need to do is kind of um, show up and, and not be completely useless, then I think they can do that. Um, so, yeah, I, I see you've got five and a half on screen there, which is interesting because that means that's coming at a, a point further as well. So, yeah, it's it's a tricky one. I, I mean, I think this is probably a winnable game for the Highlanders. So I would probably still take the the plus uh, even at that number. But as I said, I think a lot of the value possibly already been sucked out of this. Do they, uh, do they load shed uh, Wi-Fi? What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you into the next <laughs> game, Nathan, and I'm going to change connections because my Wi-Fi, which I pay a fortune for every month, is once again playing up here. Uh, and no this worries. game, I know you've got an opinion. Sorry, yeah, I'm, gonna have to, I'm actually battling to, to hear it all. So I'm going to bring you into yeah. the next game. Blues yeah. minus 10.5 against the Brumbies. And we've got a points line here, 48 and a half. And I know you posted on the forum under 53 and a half or 54 and a half. And I also like that, but I moved a bit slowly. The price there, but you've got a, a low points line. I'm going to pop off a second. I'll be back. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, as I said, um, it didn't, that 40, uh, sorry, 53, 54 didn't last that long. Um, once the weather forecast ticked over, it does look like uh, quite heavy rain um, all around. Uh, the kickoff time and 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 after so at, at 48 and a half i mean the, the thing is that often these the the rain related lines actually don't drop as far as they potentially should um because it's difficult to account for exactly how much um, factor the rain's going to have so i think it could be one of these ones that it's worth taking the under on the points now uh in the hope that it will drop a little bit more and then you can assess things closer to, to kickoff time. So if you're watching it live, you, know, you, you can actually see where the conditions are turning out um, the way that you think they're going to. Uh, and, I, and I think the other thing is um, if uh, looking at rain radars is a good thing, like generally like, you know, close to kickoff, because that's actually going to tell you with a high degree of accuracy whether the, you know, the weather is going to pan out the, the way that they say. I I've sort of follow these, um, the, the forecast quite quite closely in that way. And, um, you know, I've, I've seen instances in the past where the, the forecast will say, you know, heavy rain, you know, on a particular location, but you can go to the rain radar and you can actually see that, that clump of rain, you know, clearly bypassing that city. Um, yeah. And so, you, you know, it's just not going to turn out. So I think um, points, points are a funny one for me, like, uh, you know, as bad as you always trying to identify leaks, right. And, and plug things. And for some people it's, you know, they, they could, handicap rugby quite well and then they'll take their winnings and they'll just go and spank it all away on premier league football or you know <laughs> mean ba or something else so um but for me points lines have been a little bit of a leak and i think part of it is that um you know i tend to get my bets in early sort of fire and forget you know walk away and um see how they've done at the end of the weekend i mean you can't really do that with some of these points lines especially if you're betting weather right you know you need to be there uh you know i've, I've sort of missed the boat on a, a couple of things where if i've been plugged in and, and watching you know a drew a game um, a couple of times you know i would have sort of altered what i was doing so yeah it's i guess it's just also different styles of betting so well, hopefully I'm back. Um, in fact, let's see, it was my error. I was actually connected to the wrong network. Um, I, was connect I wasn't I was connected to my Wi-Fi. So sorry, Wi-Fi providers. Hopefully you are, you are going to be okay still. But uh, quite a few comments coming there. I saw also Johan Estes. And I'll just, Johan, just to give you a shout out. I know you always share your treble on the show. But you hit the treble very nicely last week. You hit the two Friday games. And then I think it was the Northampton Saints. You got it a nice minus there. So well done for that on uh, last week's show. Right, let's go into the final Super Rugby game then of the, uh, what do I, oh, I jumped onto the wrong game there, didn't I? Um, let's go into the uh, fourth up against uh, the Crusaders. 
Here we got the Force plus 14 and a half against the Crusaders and a point sign of 60.5. And I'll tell you up front, Nathan, it's hard to back the Force against the Crusaders, but I just looked at this and went, it looks a little bit high to me given given how this Crusaders team have, have performed. Yeah, um, I agree. It's This is another number which you know, seems sort of quite widely varying um, uh, numbers. So the 14 and a half is, is, is probably a decent Force number. I was actually hoping because I saw it start to drop. I was hoping it would drop a bit lower, and that you know, if it ever, if it kind of got to you know around eleven, that I'd probably look to go the other way and, and back the Crusaders. So, um, yeah, it, it, it is a it is difficult to back the force at the moment. Um, and I think in the past their their home record um, has been good, and you know, it was something that you kind of count on. But uh, yeah, I, I I'm not so convinced at the moment. I see someone saying it was, you know, force was eighteen. So it just, uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's very, for me, it's very difficult to to want to get involved in the force. I, I would have, I mean, at, at eighteen, that's that's a completely different story. But uh, yes, yeah, agree. And uh, for just saying Crusaders up and down, but no way I'm going on a plus for force. Yeah, look, mm. I actually did. I took a bit of the plus fifteen and a half. Well, when I say early in the week, I know the markets often open outside of South Africa a little bit different than them. I think what the South African bookies generally do is they let those early lines get taken. And so often I'll say an opening line of 15 and a half when in actual fact it opened 18 and a half overseas. So I'm normally basing that on local. I took 15 and a half, expecting the line to move a bit more, but I think it's probably going to stabilize there around about where it is now. I don't think there'll be uh, too much. Uh, Henrik does say that you have to be crazy to back the minus 14 and a half satyrs. And he also, Oracle is with us in spirit because this is an Oracle saying rubbish versus rubbish, according to the Undertaker. <laughs> Henrik, Henrik, I'm glad to see you getting back into your punting. Look forward to having you on the show again soon as well. Right, that's super rugby for you, Will. I just want to check, sorry, with all the Wi Fi problems and that, I have covered all four games, eh? You, you uh, have. Yeah, and, well, you, you, covered, you covered three of them and then I covered the other one. <laughs> okay, excellent, excellent. No, that's good. I just wanted to make sure we got everything in there. And uh, now we can move on to some URC action. We've got eight games this weekend. I always find it quite difficult to sort of jump from Champions Cup to URC back to, you know, back to Champions Cup and that sort of stuff. And uh, plenty this weekend. I, I didn't even try and handicap these games. And I actually mentioned it in the forum there that team news is going to be critical. And, and not even the final team, but just, you know, which team, which players are traveling, which aren't. If we look at even like last week with the Bulls not tra tra traveling to Northampton, that type of thing. There's going to be a bit of that, and, and the prices, I think, do reflect that. So let's move into the first game, Friday night, South African time. We've got the Warriors. They definitely seem to be edging out minus 19.5 against the Sharks and a points line of 47.5. Yeah, you're right. This was a week where you really had to be reading the tea leaves in terms of uh, looking at uh, the fixtures. So who played last week? Because obviously a lot of teams had a, had a week off, um, and, then, and then others were, were playing in, in European competition. Um, also, a lot of commentary from the, the coaches about what they were thinking and what they were going to do. Some teams are really good in terms of uh, putting out you know, announcements, um, whether it's uh, things related to injury reports. So some of them are really good with their injury reports. They'll tell you that, you know, so-and-so is out and, you know, this is a long-term injury and all of these sorts of things. And then others, obviously, you know, it's just crickets. You don't hear anything and you have to sort of figure it out for yourself. I think this was a game where if you'd looked at the fixtures and you kind of understood that the you know the sharks played last week that they the that glasgow didn't uh that the sharks are on a three-week trip to europe now um including in that third week will be the semi-final and this is their this is their tough game they've got a slightly easier um uic game next week i think it might be the scarlet's can't remember off the top of my head so it was it you could sort of read between the lines and say okay this was going to be the game where they were probably going to to rest and rotate um, and that's exactly what happened. Um, you know, this this line, I, I don't know exactly where it started. I got on it at 15 and a half. And, you know, as soon as that team news came out, it started to steam. So, uh, yeah, the Sharks, I see the comment, Sharks, B or C team. Um, I couldn't tell you because it didn't recognize a lot of the names. <laughs> they, were all, they were all new to me. Um, they could have just picked them off the street for all I know. So, uh, yeah, it's... Um, not 19 and a half uh it it's i mean look let's face it this is probably going to be a blowout you know this would be one of these ones if you're you know, looking at the the distribution of those outcomes um it could be that you know after after 10 minutes that uh 18 and a half looks far too small so 
Um, as I said, I'm already on Glasgow, but you know, I still think that it's, it's probably going to end in a blowout. I see the Admiral saying. Admiral Samuel, yeah, I mean, yeah, he started at eleven. Yeah, like I mean, and that and that's that's typical kind of uh, bookmaker uh, behaviour, I guess, is that that will be based on, I mean, you know, just something out of a spreadsheet, you know, with with no real thought given to to um, any of those other factors, uh, and then the market decides from there. So, um, yeah. Bit of chat in the live, a bit of discussion in the live chat. Here. I hadn't said he liked sharks over thirteen and a half points, and Hamlet agreed. And I quite like that as well, but I'd also, at the end of the day, you know, I think this could be a blowout. So for me, the over 47 and a half points is quite attractive here. And my thinking there is that, you know, if we assume that the Warriors are going to hammer them, I mean, we'd expect the Warriors to get probably well into the 30s, you know, probably quite close to that points line even themselves. And then, of course, that, that does open sort of either consolation tries or an early Sharks try. So I'm, I'm thinking I'll, I'll have a, a, I will be in Durban by this time, so I will be watching this game. Um, I'm thinking of a bit of over 47 and a half there. Uh, would you agree with that logic, Nathan, that maybe, uh, you know, if you do fancy a blowout, probably the, the overs is the way to go? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's not difficult to imagine the scenario where, where Glasgow actually get pretty close to that points title, as you said, just by themselves. Right. So that's uh, the first game. This game will be taking place at the same time. We've got Ulster who are having to bounce back from quite a hammering at the hands of Clermont last week. I must say, I didn't get involved in that game, but I, when I saw the handicap, I was quite surprised that Clermont was such narrow favourites. They're playing against Cardiff, and I just want to check my my lines here. I see uh, there was an opening call here of minus 14 and a half, so quite a lot of money for Cardiff, who will certainly be the fresher of the two sides, mate. Yeah, and, and again, I think there was some... There, there was news out there during the week that um that also we're, we're going to risk players and that's that's exactly what they've done so it's um it, and, and Cardiff are, from what i can see pretty much full strength so it, it has come in a long way and it's and it's coming to the point where right now it's uh it's, it's not something i have a have a, a strong feeling for uh yeah the uh, ulster also you know there's, there's so much off talk uh, off the field talk um at the moment as well it feels like they're you know, having a bit of a bit of a fire sale of players so you know you never quite know what that means for the you know the playing group and the coaching group the coaching group and all these sorts of things so uh yeah and and even then like i mean i've because I've, I've seen it get down to eight and a half uh and i think the thing is that um yeah the 10 to 10 and a half is still a big quite a big number so um the, the value is probably still on cardiff yes if you missed the early line might still be getting involved we've had this discussion before as well uh, Nathan even said it last week to me, you know, sometimes you, you might think you've missed the early line, but in actual fact, the bookies sometimes move it a little bit slowly as well. And this game, this line could even start a little bit lower. A lot of confidence in the, the live chat. Chris also joining us now and saying, we'll be close, Cardiff for me. So Cardiff on the plus, this will probably make it into the newsletter accumulator if the line is still the same when I send that out. Probably in the morning, or I might have to wait until tomorrow night when I'm in Derbs. Right, we move on to Saturday's fixtures. Here we have a Benetton a minus 13 and a half. This handicap opened minus 11 and a half when I looked at it in South Africa. So it has moved out slightly, but um, yeah, not, not too much movement over the last day or so. Yeah, th so this is one I have bet. So uh, I got involved when, uh, with Benetton at minus 12 and a half. Uh, minus 13, yeah, it's probably, I mean, at this point, you know, do your best just to wait and, and see what happens with the with the team lists. Um, but yeah, as I said, like, um, I, I favoured Benetton early, and that's at this point, that's still the way I'd link. All right, well, let's move into the next game. We're getting into the South African games now. Three in a row hosted in South Africa. The first game is the Lions, a minus one and a half against Leinster. Now, this game I did mention on the forum, I didn't want to price it up because I figured that Leinster would probably send uh, the second string side over. And, and for that reason, there was some, I think, plus seven and a half Lions early in the week over in, in let's say, in the UK and now they're starting as as favourites, but yeah, that's a. I mean, I've seen this Leinster. Leinster got a tremendous amount of depth, and I've seen them actually do very well with this sort of second team, if you want to call it that. But then I know I think it was the Bulls last year gave them good hammering at at Loft. This looks like a tricky encounter on the line here. Yeah, I th I think the the team use is absolutely key here. So as you said, the the Leinster second team is actually still pretty good. Um, you know, they've got a huge squad and. Um, 
stack with internationals. So the those fringe international players, you know, they're, they're still really good. Um, I've seen sort of minus two and a half uh, on the Lions here. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm waiting for the, the 10 news, but um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm imagining that depending on what happens that I'll, I'll be on Leinster. Right, and, and I just want to go, Mark is saying he uh, reckons, yes, they, they don't have the front liners, but they are targeting the lines. And I think that's also a good point, Mark, is that even without their front liners, they could have a chance. But Henrik's got the bet that I like here. Stood out for me like an absolute sore thumb. Over 52.5 points in Joburg. Um, yeah, I think that's an absolute cracker. Henrik, I, I, I expect that line to move into the mid-50s by kickoff. Hmm. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, we just... Sorry, you agree there, Nathan? I was just going to say, um, I think I think Mark's earlier point um, was a good one as well in terms of targeting that fixture. So, you know, it's similar to what I said about the Sharks, that I thought they were going to take the week off this week and possibly target next week. I think um, the reverse is true here. I think uh, this is probably one that needs to would target. Yeah, no, fair comment there. Looks like a lot of support for the overs there. Um, Farid does say Lions all the way. This is what they look for. And I must say, Farid, I gave this game quite a bit of thought. Now, the Lions team of the last couple of years, I wouldn't have had too much confidence in. But this Lions team this season is going pretty well. And if the Leinster do feel the sort of full B side, you've got to think they can put them away. But for me, I'm not actually looking at the results of this match. This is a time I want to be a points punter. And I'll certainly be grabbing that uh, 52.5 if it's not gone by the end of the show, which, of course, sometimes it is. Right, let's move on to the next game. Then also South African, uh, we got the Bulls. They took a hammering last week against the Northampton Saints. I think most of us won the minus in some way or another. I think the bookies took a hammering there. It was a strange game, though, in the sense that at, at half time they were totally outplayed, but only six points down. They'd had a couple of fortunate tries, but then uh, Northampton running away with it. They're back home. We can expect their strongest team to play this one. And they're up against the Munster side that, by all accounts, has sent a relatively strong squad over to South Africa because I guess they, they can't afford maybe like Leinster just to just to take it easy in certain cases. And we've got a handicap here, minus 10 and a half. And a points line, I'll tell you up front, that I'll be all over at 49 and a half. Yeah, so my understanding is that the, the Bulls will actually be missing a few as well. Not not from resting, but I think they just have a few injuries and a possible suspension. Um, as you said, most assuming a strong team. Um, so I'll just probably have a sneaky look at, at Munster here. You know, that's it, it's still a lot of points for a, a team that... Um, you know, has a huge amount of pedigree and uh you know we're getting down to the business end of the season and i think this is probably where you know monster kind of uh um, make their money um you know d down at the pointy end so yeah I'll, I'll sort of wait and see what happens with the teams but at this point um yeah i think I'm, i have some interest in monster but interested to see what the undertaker henrik reckons on the points here but looking at points at loftus now the loftus surface tends not to be as reliable if i can put it that way as the ellis park surface we obviously have had a bit of rain about in joburg and thunderstorms but i'm expecting probably pretty decent conditions for this one i do think that 49 and a half is is going to be the play i'm not as confident as i am on the lions lens the game but i do like over 49 and a half and i'll probably go with that rather than uh than have a look at at, at the handicap chris coming in saying uh, likes munster to keep this close second half in particular yeah munster are one of those sites they can somehow just always stay in the fight, and they tend to go quite well in South Africa as well. Right, that's the Bulls up against Munster. We are moving down the card rapidly. We've got the Stormers up against Ospreys. This handicap, and I'm quickly going to check my line. I, I didn't I didn't price these, but this opened up here in South Africa, minus 18 and a half, so just edged out slightly, but not a lot of movement on this one, but it's a big cap against the Ospreys. It, it is a big cap, yeah, and uh, you know, again, it all comes down to the to team news and, and who the Ospreys have, have sent or who they're going to roll out there. I haven't actually looked at who the Ospreys have up next, and as I said, that's been you know, quite a, a, a key influence on, on some of these um, handicaps this week, so we'll look. But again, I, I think if the Ospreys gets out big enough, uh, they are a team that have been, uh, been reasonably successful backing, similar to the Lions, uh, so... Yeah, I, I I would probably be interested in the Ospreys if I can see a big enough number. Right, Henrik saying he likes Ospreys on the plus here and unders on total points. So, yeah, this is a game. It'll be interesting to see. Also, one thing about Cape Town, you want to look at the wind as well. I didn't watch that game against La Rochelle, but the wind definitely played a factor there. And if it's howling like that, yeah, it's quite, you know, certainly a lot of, a lot of kicks are going to be pretty hard to land. So, Henrik on the unders there and the Ospreys plus. 
I suppose are one of those sides that I feel have punched above their weight a few times this season, so I might also be leaning the plus there. Let's get into the later games now. We've got kind of up against Zebra. Now, um, yeah, when this when the line I got early in the week, or not that I took, but that I that I noted was minus sixteen and a half, and I see now minus seventeen and a half against Zebra, the home team favourites. Yeah, I think I think Connor is probably the right size. I, I know they're not playing particularly well, but I, I would be. I think from memory, they are having a few players come back. Um, some of the, the the internationals and some of the I think long term injuries. So um, I, I, it's it's not um, a strong field, but I kind of think that maybe they've got a performance in them um, coming, and uh, this might be it. Yeah, certainly one of those games where I'm either thinking home team minus or no bet. I couldn't back uh, Zebra mm. on the plus here. I think it'd be too uh, nerve-wracking. Farid, on the other hand, is saying Zebra all the way. They will score against Connor. So, yeah, we get people, takers on both sides of the fence. Just going back to the Stormers game, Johan saying Stormers 1-12. to Yeah, certainly uh, could be a big runner there, Johan. I have to agree with you on that one. Right, let's move on to the final game of the URC. We've got Edinburgh up against the Scarlet. Scarlet have had a terrible season. And I'll tell you that the opening line that I noted down was exactly this, 18 and a half. And we've got a points line of 49.5. Yeah, pro- probably not one that I'm going to touch. Uh, I just don't have it. I, I, it's a big number. I don't really have a great feel for it. Um, Edinburgh they had a great start to the season. I kind of feel like they've faded a little bit more recently. But um, again, they, they do have quite a lot of points in them. So um, if this one does turn into a blowout, you know, it could be that looking at Edinburgh points might be the way to go, but it's, it's probably not a game that I'll, I see myself getting involved in. Yeah, certainly a lot of rugby games and a lot of sport to bet on this weekend. You don't have to get involved in everything. And I, at this stage, I'm very much alongside you there, Nathan. Nothing jumps out at me on this one. Possibly at Edinburgh points overs. But yeah, I mean, they also had to travel back from, from South Africa. And I think this is the, everything to me in this game screams, stay away, stay away. Let's uh, just pop over to the live chat. Uh, yeah, Henrik, I think you've summed it up quite nicely there. Last two URC games, no idea what to do. The Admiral likes the Scarlets, and uh, Edinburgh struggled to accumulate points, says Farid, and uh, Scarlets fell off a cliff since McNichol left. Yeah, if, if you read the comments, even if you listen to Nathan, <laughs> we're all basically saying the same thing. Be a hell of a careful about this game. <laughs> Excellent. Well, it was a quick show without the Oracle here. I mean, there's no such thing as a quick show with the Oracle here. And uh, we're ready to move into best bets. And uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts if you like anything in any of the other leagues. I know I think it was for you to mention a whole lot of them up, up front in the show. If there's anything else you fancy as well, let us know. But let's move into the uh, best bets. Yeah, it's, it's again, it's a tricky one this week because, as I said, I think a lot of the value that I was seeing has come out of some of these lines. So the the you know, the things that I've bet are that a lot of them are, are long gone now. So uh, I think possibly that Blues Brumbies game, um, the under in that, I think it, it still probably has further to go. So I think, as right. you pointed out um, on the forum, that a lot of these games had gone under anyway. Uh, I think pre, three previous games had gone under between yeah. these two teams. And in fact, I wanted to. I didn't point it out on the forum, but one of those games actually took place in Melbourne last year, which and we had the discussion, and I rate Melbourne as a yeah. pretty high scoring ground. So that, that was the only game to go unders on last year's card. So yeah, I, I think I think so. I think even forty eight, there's a there's there's probably a still a bit of room on the unders there. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, URC uh, um, again, it is all very dependent on team use, but. Uh, yeah, I, 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 as I said, I am waiting uh, with keen interest to see what kind of team leads to put out because, um, you know, I, I think um, that, that the, 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 um, the minus two and a half could look pretty tasty um, if, if they put out something half decent. No, fair enough. And uh, look, as I say, my newsletter of best bet should be out tomorrow. I might be under a bit of pressure this week, but I think you can probably safely say that overs at uh, overs at Ellis Park could be the way to go there for me, over 52 and a half. I also like the 49 and a half on the Bulls game. Henrik says Carter plus 10 and a half is his best bet. Let's just go up here uh, to the Admiral, says Leinster win and overs on that game is his best bet. And Johannes Treble, he hit hit it nicely last week. Highlanders plus seven and a half. Lions, Leinster over 52 and a half. Bulls, Munster over 49 and a half. Johan, 
you and I are either both having a terrible or both having a good weekend. We're very much in a, in alignment, certainly on those overplays. Right, that brings us to the end of the show. We're just scraping in around the half hour mark. And Nathan, yeah, thanks very much, mate. Uh, great chatting to you again as always. Enjoy the weekend's rugby. Anything else planned for you for the weekend? Uh, not a whole lot at the moment, actually. No, I was, I was sort of away out of town last week. So it's, um, yeah, back home and um, probably just doing a bit of life admin. Excellent. Don't enjoy it. I'll be taking a few walks, hopefully, along the uh, beachfront there in Belito, where we're going to be staying for a few days. And then off to San Lamia. Pity I'm not a golfer. I played golf many years ago. There's some great golf there. But I'm going with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law as well. I can't see them on the golf course either. But thanks, everyone. Nathan, great to have you join us. Thanks to all the guys in the live chat. And we'll be back next week for the Handicap Rugby Chat That Matters.